Hey YouTube, it's Ken here with another first time opening, first day review. This time we've got the blue microphone. This is the USB Snowball uh, dual condenser microphone. And as you can see, I've got a couple of them here. And these I actually picked up for about $60 each on eBay. So they're not too expensive right now, but we're going to go ahead and uh, first do a um, an unboxing and then we're gonna go ahead and show you the comparison of these microphones to other microphones you may have in the house microphones such as a standard headset this is a Logitech H55 standard around the back head headset that you're actually listening to me on right now so this gives you the quality of what a headset sounds like additionally I have <laughs> a Guitar Hero microphone also made by Logitech USB connector uh, these actually offer surprising fidelity. Um, my last review making the um, FC150 digital camera view was actually recorded on one of these. And just for comparison, I'm also going to go ahead and show you the re audio, recordy, uh, <laughs> audio recording quality of a Bluetooth headset. This is a Jabra BT125. Very basic, very cheap. So, we're going to go ahead and unbox one of these. <sighs> All right, so the unboxing is going to be back here. We've got a panel right back here. It looks like this is where it will come open. And there is no tape on this. You know what? Don't listen to me yet. I don't want to tear this open and break it. Okay, so. No, actually, I think I was right. Okay, yeah. So it does open up back here, just like I said. There are no glue points that I can see, but the rest of the box, of course, will hold on to it. Doing my best not to tear the box, which I failed. I have slightly torn the box, so. As unfortunate as that is, there we go. All right. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn this over. Right here in the bottom, it looks like we have our manual. Set that off to the side. The rest seems to just slide right out, and it does. Now be careful, everything does appear to be loose. Okay. The USB microphone itself is sitting in a plastic form mold cradle, so it won't fall out. It's not attached to anything, so you can loosely just pull it right out. First thing I gotta say with this device, these things look awesome. They look fantastic. They kind of have this retro design to them, that retro grill right off the front and polished black is the color that I personally uh, picked up. These things just look fantastic. Just sitting on a desk, you know, they're, they're going to be eye-catching. Uh, across the top you have the blue microphone logo. The snowball it says on the side. Designed by Blue, assembled in China. So these are made in China. Not that that really matters. Uh, great. In fact, I think I'll hold on to this for a little while longer just so I don't scratch it while I'm further unboxing it. Alright, so these appear to be the cords. Yes, you've got one standard USB 2.0 connection. And this is... okay, so this is the tripod that it comes with. This is another neat little feature of the uh, blue snowball, that it comes with a fully adjustable tripod that's great for sitting on a desk as you can see right there. Of course I'm making a mess over here. And if I remember correctly, this tripod is... okay, yeah, here we go. So the tripod does extend slightly with a locking nut here in the center, as such. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can't attach this. Now, the way that I'm doing this review is I am effectively doing it like most of consumers would. They will not read the manual. They're just going to go ahead and put this together as best as they can see and plug and play. So we're going to see if it is as easy as that. So you've got a single 
jack down there, uh, threaded jack. And we'll go ahead and just screw this on. The connection is smooth. And there you go. Okay. So this is fully adjustable from what I've been told. And I believe you can even adjust, or maybe not. I thought that you could adjust the uh, pitch. Well, I suppose you could if you wanted to mess with these. Nah. I might actually have to read up on that one. I am uncertain if this is adjustable up and down. So it might be always set at this particular height, but we might actually have to read up on that. Oh wait, so this is the Blue Snowball uh, dual condenser microphone. It's got dual condensers. On the back side you have your standard USB connection as well as a uh, toggle switch with three settings. The first setting, if I remember correctly, is cardioid. Uh, cardioid. The second setting is cardioid with a 10 decibel uh, filter on it so that if you're recording really, really loud um, audio, for example, like um, an electric guitar, you might want to switch it to that so you don't get cracking. And then the third one is 360 omnidirectional recording. One of the, uh, oops, one of the uh, condenser microphones is dedicated to cardioid while the other one is dedicated to omnidirectional recording. Now, looking at my tripod, I do notice that it's slightly angled. So, manufacturing... Okay, never mind. It's slightly angled because of the way that I secured it. Alright. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just hook this up to a computer. I'm using Audacity, a uh, freeware program that is downloadable on the internet, no charge, so if you are just completely basic and don't have any audio recording software, that's one I would recommend, Audacity. Got a lot of great tools to use. Like I said, it's freeware, so you don't have to worry about you know purchasing or licensing, to the best of my knowledge at least. Uh, and it should allow the use of plug and play microphone. Now when I plug this into the laptop and start recording with this, I will cease to record with these headsets so you'll be able to hear the difference. And I'm going to go ahead and record in all different modes. Once again, you're currently hearing me on these H55 Logitech around the head standard headphones. Next one we're going to... Actually the next one I'm going to do is this Guitar Hero microphone. That way you can get an idea of what that sounds like. And then lastly we'll go ahead and do this one and the Bluetooth will just be for fun for later. All right, welcome back. So fun, one thing I forgot to mention while we were uh, on the um, H55 around the head headset was that I'm setting in um, the Windows audio settings every recording source as uh, level 50. Uh, don't want to have it overdone with 100% didn't want to have it underdone so just to let you know everything is going to be set to recording level 50 50 percent all right so this of course is the logitech standard handheld microphone normally comes with guitar hero this one is the playstation 3 version uh, i just hooked it up to a computer one day to see what it could do and ironically enough it actually recorded pretty decent audio uh, as well as a headset to the best of my knowledge um, I'll give you an idea of exactly, you know, the best recording positions for this microphone. For example, if I point it upward, now the sound obviously changes because of the uh, directional recording that this microphone has. If I point it away from me, once again, you're getting a different kind of audio tone. Point it right back to me is what you're expecting. This uh, particular microphone, you know, it, it, it was designed to try and not pick up the sound of your television while you're singing. That way you wouldn't get feedback but uh, it is still a low quality microphone but Logitech you know Logitech low quality is kind of mid quality economy if you ask me they, they usually make pretty good stuff uh, using one of their microphones using one of their mice uh, mice using their audio equipment as well for stereo so I'm a pretty big Logitech fan so it's gonna be a big hurdle to jump for this snowball to really sell me on if it is one of the highest rated home studio use microphones today. Right then, um, I wanted to give a comparison of what a microphone sounds like with both voice, with whistling, and uh, with an instrument. So this is obviously the voice that you're hearing right now, and this is what a whistle sounds like on this particular microphone. I will be going back later with the headset to whistle on that for comparison as well. So. 
So that'll give you an idea of what whistling sounds like with this handheld Logitech microphone. Uh, again, I don't want to be whistling directly into it as the microphone's very small wind suppressor, the windscreen, would not be able to block direct wind to the best of my knowledge. For example, I'm going to go ahead and whistle here and you'll hear the cracking if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> And looking at my recording software, it is incredibly much more loud. <laughs> okay, uh, if you give me one second, I'm going to go ahead and grab a cello and let you hear pizzicato as well as a bowed sound using this microphone. All right, so I'm back with a cello now. I apologize if I'm a little bit off screen. Uh, I didn't want to uh, move the table too much just in front of me, and cello is kind of large instruments. So... I'm easier to adjust than everything else. All right, so what I'm first going to go ahead and do is give you a comparison of pizzicato, which is finger plucking, as well as then a, uh, a bowed sound using this microphone. Now, unfortunately, the one bad thing about this microphone is that uh, it obviously doesn't have a stand of its own. Uh, I'm using a soft foam mouse pad as kind of a uh, dampener to make sure that I'm not getting reverberations from the table that this is going to be sitting on. So that's pizzicato. And that gives you an idea of what this microphone can do with a uh, cello, with direct high amplitude uh, musical instrument coming directly into the microphone. I had the microphone set maybe about about six inches from the F holes, maybe about you know three to four inches from the uh, actual strings themselves. So this review will give you an idea of what this microphone can do. Next, we're going to go ahead and plug in the blue microphone and I'm going to go ahead and do recordings on all three settings so that you can get a good comparison. Alright, so we're back with the blue snowball currently hooked up in its cardioid standard recording um, polar position which is uh, dip switch number one. Now the first thing I noticed when I first plugged this in is it actually has a red LED light on the top which I'll show you real quick. And that LED light tells you that you are currently plugged in. So at least you know if you ever run into, I guess, problems where you don't know if you're actually recording anything, that LED light will tell you. All right, let me get this set up here. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go ahead and do recording with this microphone, both voice, whistling, and then the instrument. I'm also going to show you the differences between the cardioid, the cardioid uh, with the 10 decibel um, filter, as well as the omnidirectional. Now, currently, I'm, of course, in front of the microphone. It's picking up my voice right in front of it. And what we'll go ahead and do is I'll show you if I turn the microphone this way. So now my voice is going to be a little bit different, as you can probably hear. Uh, I'm going to further turn it towards the camera now. So now I am behind the microphone, and looking at my audio recording software, the amplitude is far lower, so that's because this is on cardioid polar position one. Now turning it back towards me, you'll of course hear my voice hopefully get much more clear, because that is what recording position we are currently in. Now I'm also going to go ahead and show you what whistling sounds like on this particular microphone. And just for chagrins, we'll go ahead and do it with the uh, different directions as well. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of what this cardioid number one looks like. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and switch over to cardioid with the 10 decibel filter. This is kind of a test to see if you can switch mid-recording without running into problems. So we're going to go ahead and change this dip switch. And okay, 
So my audio recording software recognized the little click, but it didn't stop recording. So this is good. If you need to change mid, you know, just on the fly, it looks like the uh, microphone will let you do that without stopping whatever recording software you are currently using. So that's a good thing. Uh, so now we're with the 10 decibel filter. I'm looking at my audio recording software and it is obviously much more quiet. The amplitude has dropped significantly. And in fact, I'm not even sure if it's recording me. So hopefully you can still hear me. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and work with the, oh, I'm sorry, I need to go back to the original. <laughs> Don't mind that, that's my cell phone. Um, I had to switch back to uh, the dip switch version one, which is this straight cardioid with no filter because I forgot to do the uh, review with the cello. So let me go ahead and grab that real quick. Now this time the microphone is set a little bit further away from the instrument than the handheld Logitech microphone that I was reviewing just a sh uh, second ago. <sighs> and now I'm getting a cell phone call. One second. Let me turn this on silent. I do apologize for the interruption. All right. Okay. So, where was I? Right, instrument. Uh, I switched back to uh, dip switch version one, which is the cardioid with no filter because I forgot to show you the uh, comparison of the instrument with the this microphone. So, this is pizzicato. And now we're gonna go ahead and show you what, uh, what the bowed sound is. <laughs> Now also, don't judge me on my cello playing, I'm still learning, and this is just for review sake anyway. So that is with cardioid position number one. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to position number two. Okay, so now I'm in position number two. Once again, you're able to hear me, but I should have a uh, like a 10 decibel filter on so I'm not gonna be nearly as loud as I was um, so once again here's what whistling sounds like we're gonna go ahead and turn the mic and turn it again and we're right back to where we started Okay, so once again, here's the instrument pizzicato. And now the bowed version. With an unfortunate second string, sorry about that. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to omnidirectional. Now omnidirectional should use the second condenser microphone to record 360 degrees. So no matter which direction I turn this microphone, it should sound roughly the same. That's what we're hoping for. All right, so now my microphone is picking up without the uh, decibel filter on it. So I can see once again, the amplitude has jumped on my audio recording software. This is 360 omnidirectional recording mode. Um, so again, I currently have the microphone pointed directly towards me. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the side. So now I'm to the side, about a 90 degree angle from the microphone. And my audio recording software shows no real change in amplitude. So I think that this omnidirectional recording is doing exactly what it you know, advertises. We're going to go ahead and turn it now completely away from me. So now I am behind it. And once again, the microphone is not showing any drop in amplitude on my recording software. So this is good. Uh, it's doing exactly what it advertised. So we're going to go ahead and bring it back forward. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and do the whistle test. Turn it to the side. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it away from me. And according to my recording software, I don't see any drop in amplitude whatsoever. I'm uncertain of what the sound may sound like in this omnidirectional. Um, you know what? 
I'm actually going to go ahead and do one more test just for omnidirectional because it says that it's a 360 degree, uh, degree recording mode. So I'm going to hold a note and turn this microphone in roughly about 360 degrees and see if it records the same in all directions. So we're going to point it away from me. Oh, actually, I have a better idea. Hold on. I don't want any kind of discrepancies here, so we're going to go ahead and use a an app that I have that will create a sine wave so that we get precisely the same sound everywhere. Okay. That's kind of annoying. Okay. So this is 516 hertz. If for some reason you have software that's recording, you know, what hertz this is, then Okay, there, dropped it a little bit so I can talk. So this is 516 hertz. If for some reason you have software that needs to know exactly what frequency at, that's what sine wave we're currently producing. This is 516 hertz. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the microphone now. Well, as best as I can. So, I have no idea what that sounds like until I check the uh, audio a little bit later. Hopefully it sounded great all the way around. Um, if it didn't, then at least you'll know roughly where dead spots are if you're going to be using for this microphone for, say, uh, uh, a, a band practice recording where you have instruments all around it. Um, so, by using this video and the sound that I just produced, hopefully you'll be able to know where the dead spots are so that you won't have your instruments there. So, once again, we're going to go ahead and now work with pizzicato. And now we're going to go ahead and do a bowed. And because we're in omnidirectional again, I'm going to go ahead and record in all positions. Which, honestly, I should have done in the other ones, but oh well. it away from me. Now this is interesting. I did notice a change in the amplitude with this really loud recording because the instrument's obviously more loud than my voice. I did see a drop in amplitude when the microphone is pointed slightly away from me, but it'll be more definitive when you're actually listening to this video. Okay, so that is the sound of the omnidirectional blue microphone. I'm actually going to go back to dip switch number one, which is just st standard cardioid. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to show you the differences in recording a loud instrument in different microphone positions. So once again, here's for, you know, um, reference. And now we're going to go ahead and turn it. And turn it. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same test in cardioid position two, which is with the 10 decibel filter. Alright, and we're back to position one, where we should be getting the standard uh, recording uh, pattern of this microphone. Now, this microphone did pick up more sound than the headset as well as the um, Guitar Hero microphone that I was using earlier. So that is a plus that this is going to be, it's a very sensitive microphone it seems like. Now, I'm curious what this microphone would you know how it would react in a bedroom next to a computer desktop with a lot of fans I'm uncertain right now because I'm using a laptop that I've got off the table I wanted to try and make this as clean recording as possible for your benefit now um, 
I'll probably look online later to see if this tripod has additional positions that I'm unaware of. I did actually take the time to read through this and it has absolutely nothing in it regarding the tripod and its different uh, positions it can be in. Um, it pretty much just is your quick start guide for most hardware you get, you know, plug and play, and it has basic frequently asked questions. Other than that, there was nothing really helpful in this magazine. So this is as basic as your microphone can get from Logitech. But I am excited to see exactly what kind of audio recording quality this has, and I can't wait to get some analog recordings of maybe guitar, piano, and my cello eventually for you guys. Anyways, thanks for dropping by for this review of the Blue Snowball Microphone. Hopefully I'll get some more out, uh, reviews out there when I get some more toys in. You guys have a great day.